We have Jerry Goodell back with his weekly commentary on the markets and also uh, his comments on his Iowa travel and the Performer Tour right here on Connected Farmer, your channel to keep you up to date with the latest trends in agriculture and livestock. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. So Jerry, how are you today? Uh, can you comment a little bit on this market close uh, on Friday? Well, it was a kind of a tough week all the way along here. Uh, the uh, market activity here. Uh, of course, they, the markets keep an eye on what's going on in the Pro Farmer Tour and things of that nature. Uh, and the, what happens in individual states, of course, the western part of the Corn Belt was uh, was part of the, the Pro Farmer Tour that that caught people's interest about how things were difficult out there. But they were also watching the Ohio to Iowa to Minnesota to part of the tour. And boy, what a contrast we've had this year between uh, the fields uh, from Columbus uh, to Iowa City. Uh, going north of Iowa City wasn't all that encouraging. Well, the same situation, we went from Sioux Falls to, to a couple spots in Nebraska and then up through western Iowa and then into Minnesota uh, to Rochester where they had their final numbers. Uh, from there, uh, then I think what's happened too is this market gets the dull uh, uh, dog days of August and that the numbers that uh, were coming out of the east were, you know, Pretty encouraging numbers comparison to uh, 2018's kind of good yield potential that we had that year. Uh, and that, uh, while the West was uh, maybe not as negative as people thought it could be, and that, and then, uh, oh, uh, the export sales that we had on Friday, or excuse me, on Thursday of last week, uh, the beans were pretty impressive, but, uh, and the corn had uh, a solid number, but. Overall, it didn't. Uh, it wasn't as uh, substantial as some people wanted, and then we ended up having the technicals in this thing. And unfortunately, our major investors here in the U.S. Uh, uh, the commodity markets these days are funds that uh, really follow the technical outlook. And some of the moving averages were broached, and uh, once that happened, then uh, there was out the side door uh, from those investors. So that the uh, defensive markets came in at the end of the week. I still kind of feel like that, uh, that the fundamental issues and things here are still quite open, but in the short term, uh, not totally surprising here uh, uh, with the markets being lackluster to defensive here at the, in the late parts of August uh, because of the fact that uh, a lot of overseas buyers are sitting back and waiting to see what kind of real real uh, numbers we come up with here in September from some of the early harvest. Yes, and I heard uh, you traveled to some Iowa counties. Uh, where was it exactly and uh, what have you seen there? I, I, you right. told me that there wasn't a lot of rain. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I didn't make it all the way to Iowa. I, I drove from the, uh, Chicago out to the Clinton, Iowa area, which is on the Illinois side, and kind of observed the the, the uh, fields that uh, we had here. I tend to take the uh, Iowa, excuse me, the uh, US 30 approach across. I can see a lot more than I can see on the interstates on uh, I-88 as it's uh, compadre there uh, from that point. Yeah, very uh, interesting situation. Uh, it kind of varied uh, exactly like we've had from the tour. There's some areas that look pretty solid, got some good moisture at the right times. Other areas uh, 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 west of I-39 of the reference point for people in Lee County definitely started to see some issues there uh, about things. And also you had a wind problem out there uh, happened uh, Oh, 10 days or so ago, a mini derecho, if you want to say that. Saw part of that issue. I wouldn't say it was a, as flat as it was last year, but definitely got dinged up. And then uh, further west, I went closer to Iowa. Uh, the yields uh, kind of split the difference there. We had, you know, had some uh, uh, values out there in the 210 area out that west and the 230 and 
out uh, south of DeKalb, Illinois, and then at 190 bushel, 80 bushel yield uh, in between in there. And I think that's a very uh, representative situation for Northern Illinois. Uh, the, the interesting thing is, is that the, the USDA, excuse me, the Pro Farmer Tour come up with some uh, interesting uh, uh, numbers as the, as the week went on and, uh, and a final number. So what you saw there, the, you see that uh, is uh, very related uh, to what uh, the Pro Farmer Tour has reported? I think so. Uh, what I saw in my little secondary mini tour, we have, uh, our initial tour we had back the 1st of August in Central Illinois, it pointed out that this year's ear counts are going to be up. Uh, and that's really what's occurred in, in virtually uh, most areas, except for probably South Dakota and parts of, of Minnesota. And, and uh, Nebraska's off a of slight about. Iowa's about the same. Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, you know, big jumps up there in the ear counts because the, they didn't have this cool weather or cold weather that really stunted them last year. And that's a major factor when you're looking at. Uh, uh, at uh, calculating yields and all that type of thing. Of course, the number of, of kernels that we count is important. The years around seem to kind of always seem to bounce right around 16, a little up, a little down, uh, 16 rows around on the ears and that. You got some 18s and 20s, you got some, you know, 14s and less uh, from there. So that, you know, the, the twist of it is, is that, um, they don't always, in this tour, by the way, go to all areas of all these states and that. So there is always some variation between their yields that they calculate and what uh, the USDA's yield might be for a state or from a standpoint of, uh, of uh, what the final yield might be. Because, of course, weather does still have an ongoing impact, all these things. Uh, I guess the... Uh, uh, the, the twist of it is, is that uh, when you're looking at the pro farmers uh, data at this point, they, they kind of re reflected a little bit of the issues that are on west of the Mississippi versus the east of the Mississippi. Uh, and that probably the one state that probably had the biggest surprise, as I uh, see it in this thing, was the Iowa yields overall. Uh, there's different different definitely different impacts for different areas of the state. They, you have districts, as they call them, and they kind of, uh, they go from the kind of the western uh, part of the northwestern part of the state, and they number them back and forth. The northern three districts of Iowa uh, definitely didn't have the kind of traditional crops they might have had, while the uh, western uh, and southwestern parts of Iowa had better than expected uh, Southeast Iowa was, was all right. You know, the, it's a situation where the uh, Iowa yields actually, from what I was anticipating, were a little bit better uh, in the Pro Farmer Tour. But at the same time, uh, the, uh, the uh, results uh, of the uh, final number uh, that the <laughs> that Pro Farmer came up with on Friday afternoon, which they have done for years, they try to make some adjustments in their individual state calculations to try to give a maybe a realistic what they see as realistic at that time, and it doesn't always work out. But uh, this year they moved uh, uh, their uh, national number to 177 bushels. Uh, that's a number that I think is is in the ballpark. I, I was using 176 for this month. The USDA was 174.6, I think it was, back uh, on their numbers. Uh, and that, the the twist of it is, is that uh, uh, they also increased uh, their harvested area by 900,000 acres. Uh, to, and that, uh, I'm not sure which states they put them in or anything like that, but I did see that total and, and that. And then you turned around. Uh, the uh, interesting twist on it is, is that all the responses from the uh, pro farmer, uh, you know, uh, leaders on uh, what they thought they saw out there, all depended on the fact that the rains needed to happen 
ASP and you know, ASAP on East for Indiana, all the way through Illinois, Iowa, uh, Indiana, or some of Nebraska, and North Dakota, uh, the whole area definitely needs a big rain. We have, and at this point, uh, there's some forecast for it, but I have to say right now, the the forecasts have not always paid out here, and I think that's a big factor in this thing is uh, what's going to be our final number on corn and soybeans here in the U.S. is uh, what happens in the over the next uh, let's just say the next fourteen to twenty one days. Yeah, said I wanted to hear from you about wheat because everybody is is speaking about less uh, wheat supply in the United States and several other countries. So how big uh, do you think the upside will be? Well, the wheat market got kind of dinged up last week, uh, partly because of the fact that we pretty well, <coughs> excuse me, had put a lot of bullish news into the thing and that, and we'd actually made a slightly new high on a lot of the technical charts and that. So that always creates an opportunity for profit taking and that uh but uh the canadian crop i've heard a, a lot of uh of uh oh uh, angst up there about what their crop is or isn't up that direction uh i think the usda's number this last month didn't change a lot on the spring wheat side of things they had all their adjustments in winter wheat uh on the pacific northwest and in montana and that and that's what uh I think was, I don't know, it, I think it caused some confusion as to what was going on in the U.S. crop uh, from there. Uh, and then at this point, uh, the USDA made this huge adjustment in Russia's crop. So the, the potential for some of these numbers on a worldwide basis, maybe we're not going to see a big change in the near term. And I think that prompted a little profit taking on things. But in in, in the South American world, uh, in that uh different ideas about the potential for uh, what's going on in Argentina's wheat crop. Highly important this year because of what's uh, kind of happened with some of the uh, freezing temperatures in the southern areas of Brazil there, in both Paraná and Rio Grande do Sul. That's where a lot of the wheat is grown in Brazil. And so there's ideas that that crop might not be all that strong. So now, you know, and mostly in the past, Brazil has went and, and utilized Argentina's uh, supplies of, uh, and they could get that on agreement without taxes and no tariff relationship. And I, th I'm, I think it's Mercur, but I, I, I might not pronounce that right. Uh, the Mercosur. 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 Yes. Thank you. I, I, I knew that I wasn't going to pronounce it right. But the, the, the interesting thing about it is, is that uh, so the wheat that might be coming out of Argentina might not get very far in the world market. So it is very interesting at this point. And then, and the other twist of it is, is that the quality issue uh, of wheat on a worldwide basis has really taken a hit here. Uh, from the standpoint, we've got less uh, Russian wheat and the, the wheat that's been hurt the worst in Russia has been the spring wheat, which has the highest protein. That kind of stuff. Then you look to the European area, They've had some good wheat uh, positives in the past. They have a bigger crop, but the quality of the crop and the protein is not so strong. Then you go to uh, out here in North America, and the Canadian crop is another one that we blend up with using their crop as a way of making our breads and, and things and the, what we need in high quality. And there's not as much there. There's not as much in the U.S. And then... <laughs> Australia is a, the, kind of the next one out there, uh, and that's going to be interesting uh, as to where it's going out because, um, well, at this point, the, the La Nina forecast for the equatorial uh, areas of the Pacific is going back towards uh, that end of the stick, which is not very good for the, uh, the spring areas, uh, in essence, uh, for South America, but it also is maybe a positive uh for our australia so we got lots of things flying around in the wheat market but i kind of feel like that there's still some strength in it and uh, the one twist of wheat right now is the fact that that in the u.s uh the wheat producers are also corn and soybean people particularly in the eastern part of the u.s and now even in kansas 
type situations where a lot of corn and, and soybeans have advanced. And so the elevator storage situation is one factor that comes into this. It's been a long time uh, situation east of the Mississippi where the elevator says, oh, by the way, if you want to be able to store your corn and soybeans here, you need to make sure that we have room for them. So you might want to sell a little wheat. And I think that might have been a factor that's thrown into this thing, too, in the U.S. market only. Uh, I can't say that that's, a, uh, you know, influencing other parts of the world. But, you know, the Chicago Board of Trade's uh, prices and, and that are based in the U.S. and still has a U.S. kind of influence it a lot of times in the short term. So that's an interesting twist on it there uh, from the standpoint that uh, the wheat market uh, still has a, a, a very uh, strong base of, of less supply and, and the demand features out there could be very strong going forward. Yes, Jerry. So next week uh, we'll have plenty of things to talk about. Uh, and thank you for your time. Oh, you bet. And uh, it's always good to talk. I, uh, it was a interesting uh, trip out through northern Illinois this week, uh, and that, and also the Pro Farmer Tour always provides some tremendous details uh, for people to look at and compare year over year. And uh, again, this year we always had uh, uh, some. Uh, valuable insights and some uh, other uh, interesting situations have come up from that tour because uh, really this year is a surprising the last few years is actually the first data driven tour that we see uh, the other ones from the usda have all been satellite or farmer survey or crop conditions type tours uh in realities and this one at least has some field samples that we can look, uh use and compare over the years and that's always useful have right. a good day sir Thank you.